Well, tonight we want to bring you the third part of Drugged, our week-long series on the opioid epidemic. Tonight we look at a group that has been particularly devastated by the easy availability of opioids, America's veterans. Jason Simkakowski was a husband, a father, and from 1998 to 2002, he served as a corporal in the U.S. Marine Corps. On August 30, 2014, the 35-year-old died at a VA hospital. An autopsy showed that his corpse was laced with a lethal cocktail of 13 different prescription drugs, including multiple doses of two opioids. He never had a chance. He was a patient at the Toma, Wisconsin VA hospital, a place so infamous for overprescribing painkillers that veterans referred to it as Candyland. Millions of Americans have been profoundly affected by opioid abuse, but the crisis finds its darkest expression in how it affects our veterans. Year after year, doctors at VA hospitals overprescribed opioid based painkillers to vets returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. The drugs were prescribed so irresponsibly, the VA itself admitted that it was complicit in the growing addiction crisis. The VA deserves blame. VA doctors diagnosed 60% of vets returning from deployments in the Middle East with chronic pain. That compares to 30% for the overall American population. Until recently, the VA treated veterans' chronic pain almost exclusively with opioid painkillers. Prescriptions soared by 270% over 12 years, and easy access to the drugs led to sky-high addiction rates. But the VA failures don't stop there. In addition to getting tens of thousands of vets hooked on synthetic heroin, the VA has consistently failed to help them deal with their addictions. Consider the VA hospital near Fayetteville, North Carolina. That's not far from Fort Bragg, the nation's largest military base. 47% of the opioid prescriptions there are abused. Yet according to the Wall Street Journal, the VA health system in Fayetteville still has no residential addiction treatment program, no inpatient opioid detoxification facility. There are only five doctors in a 21-county area who are able to dispense medications to treat overdoses. The consequence of all this? Veterans either remain hooked on the drugs until they overdose, or they turn to private clinics. At one small clinic near Fort Bragg, hundreds of veterans line up outside nearly every morning for methadone, a drug used to treat their addiction. The line begins to form at 5 o'clock every morning. That tragedy is not confined to North Carolina. It's playing out across the country. American veterans are twice as likely to die from accidental overdose as non-veterans. Last year alone, nearly 70,000 of them sought treatment for opioid use disorders at VA hospitals. It's an addiction crisis far worse than anything ever experienced in American history. We contacted the VA for a statement. They acknowledge that opioid abuse is a serious public health issue, of course, and they said they've launched an initiative to reduce opioid use among veterans. They also said that more work needs to be done, obviously. Ryan Hornell is a veteran who took a job at the VA after just a few weeks, though. He became a whistleblower because of the terrible practices he observed there. He joins us now. Ryan, thanks a lot for coming on. Uh, tonight. So thanks, the, Dr. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate the first number that jumps out as almost hard to believe is that 60% of returning vets from the Middle East, Afghanistan, and Iraq were prescribed opioids for chronic pain, and that nearly half of them developed uh, addiction to it of some kind. That number seems crazy. How could 60%, 60% of all returning vets be given these drugs? Well, it's an easy uh, way to mask you know, problems that people are having, whether it's in the military or outside the military. Um, it's easy for doctors to prescribe something that makes their patient feel better. Yes. And um, even though it doesn't really take care of the underlying issues that are there. But the reason that your, your statistics are right on, uh, why is it that when veterans get back um, from the battlefield and they're dealing with these kind of injuries and they end up in a system in a bureaucracy like the VA, and they end up being treated even worse than people end up being treated because of the opioid epidemic and, you know, in the rest of society. It's because the VA is a government bureaucracy. It's the second largest bureaucracy in the federal government. Veterans uh, are used to being in a system where there's harsh and immediate accountability for actions. So yes. when a division commander sees a, a lower level commander that's doing something wrong, they're taken care of right away. Well, veterans get thrown into a system where you're dealing with civil service regulations and laws that are archaic, and they protect the wrongdoers, and you just can't get rid of people. 
But you would think that someone would take the overview at some point. I mean, I know that hospitals and hospital systems keep close track of the data, the metrics. And someone would say, what, 60% of all returning veterans are getting opioids? That's, there's something wrong. Why did nobody reach that obvious conclusion? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, Tucker, you hit the nail on the head. It's about oversight. And there's two levels of oversight that, that need to happen, and both of them failed, at least in the, in the uh, situation at the Tacoma VA. But I speak to whistleblowers across the country, and I hear the same thing. The first level of accountability is within the bureaucracy itself, within the VA. And that accountability just simply doesn't exist. Um, when you go into a system like that where wrongdoing isn't checked, then it, it's, you know, it, any psychologist would tell you that that's going to lead to an environment where unchecked behavior leads to bad consequences. Yeah, so I would say. So you've got that, you have that first level of accountability, that's a problem. But there's also another level of accountability that's missing here, and that's among our political class, and that's the you know, our elected officials who are supposed to oversee federal bureaucracies yeah. like the VA. And as, it, as with the case in Toma, the, you know, the, the political class in Wisconsin completely failed. You had Senator Tammy Baldwin sitting on a detailed report of what yeah. was going on at the Toma VA, and a veteran died. And then you've got Congressman Ron Kind who uh, was getting complaints, and, and he didn't I've do noticed, anything. So. I've noticed, and meanwhile, the government just created an entire generation of addicts. Ryan, thank you for everything you've done on this topic. I appreciate it. Sure.